Welcome to this video about Django's incredibly tasteful yet simple comping on the 1949 version of Minor Swing coming right up. So I just got back from uh, traveling for 10 days uh, together with Tommy Davey, uh, the well-known guitar tech with fear guitar player. And we visited many um, influencers and musicians in the Gypsy Jazz community to talk about future projects, uh, collaborations and um, all kinds of things from concerts to product endorsements. Very exciting stuff and I'm pretty sure a lot of that future of those future plans will make it into videos on this channel. So for 10 days I didn't make any videos and today I'm starting again and I have a lot of interesting things lined up uh, already for this week and next week but I thought to get things rolling again and to get back into the groove I'm gonna start with a really simple uh, video or a, a simple subject or not even that it's it's but I mean it's simple to play so you can all play this and it's super interesting because it is the way that Django comps minor swing while Grappelli is playing a violin solo. And it is part of my project in which I'm transcribing lots of things of uh, the recordings that Django and Grappelli made in Rome, which eventually will make it into videos uh, in which I play some of those arrangements and songs with a live band uh, coming up very soon when I hit 15,000 subscribers or around that time because I might actually be traveling when that happens. So I made a transcription of all the tremolos and all the uh, chords that Django was playing and I thought we'd just take a look at it. Um, so I have some tab for you. Of course if you want to download these tabs you can always download them from my Patreon. There's a link in the description and uh, you, there you can download this tab but every tap I ever made. And of course, you should, you're supporting the channel as well. And also uh, subscribe and like this video. Thanks a lot. Okay, here we go. So I didn't transcribe every chord because when he's just playing rhythm, he's just playing rhythm. And I, I think it's not really important to know the exact voicings because to me it sounds like he's playing basically very easy voicings, but you can use any voicing you would like. For myself, if I, if I would comp this, I would use kind of these three four note voicings. So for I, A minor six, I would play something like this. Or that would be three notes. Or if I want to do four notes, I can do, right? Or play it like this. So the, basically that is five mute, four, five, and you can play another five, right? A minor to D minor six. And for me, I would play this so the middle four strings, two, three, two, three. And then E7, I would play the same forcing I just played for A minus six, two frets up. But now I can actually play the E on the A string as well. So there would be uh, seven, seven, six, seven. I pl probably play those four notes. So you get then you get something like A minus six, E minus six. If you want to learn how to play the basic rhythm, the basic rhythm mechanics, I won't discuss that in this video, but I made a couple of videos about that subject and I will link one of those in the description below. So the first uh, eight bars is just regular rhythm. And then we get the first uh, string of tremolos. And I think these tremolos are, are not difficult to play, but they might be chords that you would not think of to play. Uh, first thing to notice that it is three notes voicings and uh, when Django is playing tremolos behind the violin solo I noticed that he usually plays them on the uh, D, G and B string. So the these three strings. Right and then he has some interesting voicings. For example for D minor 6 he plays this. So B, A, F, A, B with an open string. A minor six. So again, D minor six. 
very nice forcing for D minor six, I think, with the, the fifth and the sixth uh, next to each other. Now, of course, this is an open string. In, the in theory, you probably could just play this uh, fretted. Let me see. Like this, right, if you want to. But with the open strings, if you have the possibility, it's nicer. But let's say you want to use this forcing in another key, uh, for instance, for do some ions, and then you have to play C minus six, then you could play that forcing there. Okay, so, but let's play with the open strings. So D minus six, two bars to A minus six. Then he stops the tremolo and he goes to, to this E7 uh, forcing, which is a uh, forcing with a flat 9. So notice he's not playing, there's, there's no 7th in this forcing. Okay. But it's nice because then you get the, you hear this sound from the A minus 6 from the F sharp. Uh, going to a, a G flat and then the B the C from A, a minus 6 goes down so, so you get but the, the, all the forcings from to F sharp to G sharp from C to B and from E to F and, and Django is all about this force leaning right force is moving in interesting ways not just going from Voicing to voicing. Of course, he does that too sometimes. Oh, that is my main line going off. But I think we're okay. Um, he does that too sometimes, but um, it really works with uh, the voice leaning he does. It makes it more appealing even. Let me see if I can turn that light on. I'm very sorry. This will all stay in the video because I don't do any editing. I know I shoot. I don't know why it turned off. Probably battery is dead. Yeah, battery is dead. Okay. So we're going to do it without the main light. I'll charge it for next time. Um, so let's play that um, from the beginning until here. All right, there's two more bars where he just plays A minus 6. Right, so then he plays an accent on the G sharp diminished. Just a, a kind of turnaround. A, a minor, E7, A minor. So let's play that with a um, backing track. Well, now let me first play it without the backing track because I have a backing track. It's on my channel. There's a link to that backing track in the description. But the problem is the backing track is, is very slow because I made it to solo on. And the recording, uh, this recording of Django is pretty fast. And also in the backing track, there's a B flat 6 uh, in the last four bars and on the recording of Django in Rome they don't do that they play E7 so it might clash a little bit but just to let you hear it with a backing I will play it also with backing track but without it sounds like this one two three four now I get the terminals Tremolos again, one, two, three, four. Let me play a bit of the backing track. It's much slower, but still. I think I was, this is almost the same tempo, but I, the real recording is much faster. Please listen to the original recording, which I will also link in the description. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the tempo, but maybe it's even like... So then you get... Let's continue. Uh, now we get one whole chorus of what I call shuffle with accents. 
And again, the the voicings are not important. I, I will play the same voicings, but he plays time. I guess really. So it's it's a continuous note uh, stream of uh, stringing eighth notes, or even eighth note sixteen. And then he gives an extra accent on the four, actually the three and and the four, like this. Uh, I wouldn't do that all the time. That that would be very um, distracting for a soloist. But in this solo, it really works because it's right before a climax. Also, he doesn't do that accent on the four every bar. So listen, listen for that. But then very something very interesting in the last two bars where it is basically A minus six E seven right. There's a turnaround. He plays a diminished chord like this, right? Just straight diminished. You could also play it here. And he starts with that on the second beat, like one, two, three, four, one. This might seem like a weird choice to play this A diminished on top of the A minus six E seven, but it's just a Red retardation sound for A minor, right? If you have a this diminished chord, it could resolve very easily to A minor. But it's only one note that has to resolve. And if you play the full diminished chord, right, it's still one note because the six can stay, that the F sharp can stay. So it's just a nice um, resolution from a diminished to A minus six, even though the rhythm section is not playing it, he's just forcing that sound on top of it and creates this very cool um, tension that you would otherwise not have because nobody else is playing it. So he's, he does that on the second beat uh, of the last two bars, three, four, one. <laughs> Pretty loud also. It, it kind of cues Grappelli to, to go even to put even more energy in the violin solo, and then he, he, he comes with these, these hits like this. One, two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, four, mm. And then, that's the second four bars. So, notice that in bar 37, it, it says quarter notes, but he's playing short muted upstrokes before uh, each chord on the beat, so before the before the first three, one, two, three, four. Mm. Get one, two, three, four. And these four, these voices are very standard voices for gypsy desk guitar players. So you can read it in the tab. Most important thing is that they're explosive, that they're short, and. Um, Oh, that's it. But they, they need to have impact. It can be pretty loud even. And the violin player is supposed to play really exciting, maybe high lines. So um, they will be audible. But it should be an interplay uh, between the violin and the guitar. Don't play those chords too. So don't play it like... No, it should be... Maybe my microphone is now... Uh, Distorting, even though I put a compressor on it, and then he ends the the chorus with some tremolos again. Very interesting tremolos again. So D minor six, and then he goes to this forcing for A minor six, which is very interesting to play that A E F sharp. But he does that so he can do a voice leading trick to go from A minor six to this E seven. Uh, he, the, the, he can play this. So you basically get e minor, uh, A minor 6, no third in this chord, to F7, to E7. So you get this, this moving note, and you can clear, hear that very clearly on the original recording. Because he's also sliding this chord slowly. Now he was playing with two fingers, so probably he played it like this. I like to fret uh, chords as much with uh, as many fingers as possible, especially when all the notes are very important to hear, like in in these uh, voicings. So like this, okay, one, four, two. 
And that's the end of the violin solo. Then they go back to the theme. So let me play uh, the shuffle chorus into these accents, right? So that would sound like this. One, two, uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> That's the theme. So let me play all of this with a backing track. And again, of course, the backing track is slower and there's a B flat 6 that isn't there, but it's still a good tool to practice. So here we go. It's not difficult to play. I, I bet you can play this and it is very tasteful and very subtle and I don't hear this happening a lot anymore nowadays in gypsy jazz. I mean people do play tremolos behind violin solos but there's something the way to the way that Django did it with those three uh, chord voicings uh, with a nice voice leading. So um, we can all learn a lot from actually transcribing not only the solos of Django but also the comping. Uh, of course, the, the previous video is also about Django's comping on another song, so check that out too. And is there anything else I'd like to say about this? Let me check the score. No, that was it. Um, take a look at it. Go to my Patreon if you want to, to support the channel and to download the tabs. And I will see you all in the next video later this week about another very interesting topic. Bye!